Pestalozzi Children's Centre is a residential training centre in Zambia, Southern Africa, teaching girls from the poorest villages and sponsoring their academic education. It's run by a few dedicated Zambian staff and a VSO volunteer. What we do is we find the brightest girls in the poorest villages and we bring them back here and we provide them with an education and we give them skills that they can return to their villages and improve the economic life of their villages. Luangwa is one such village. Hundreds of miles from any town without a hospital or a school. The isolated families who live here survive on their few crops and livestock. Women trek for hours to collect precious water from contaminated wells. Children fight over scraps of food. Poverty is... They do live in poverty because when you go there to see these girls, where they come from, you can tell which area they are really poor. Some are almost naked. Mm. Frequent droughts mean that often there's not enough food or clean water to go around. One in four children will die before they reach only three years old. Adults are lucky if they make it to 30. It's, it's a very difficult thing. When you go to the villages there, most of the time we're almost in tears. It's, it's, it's quite painful. You think of the sugar, the bread you've left back home, and look at this thing, they have nothing to eat. When I visit the girls' villages and see the children there, the look in their eyes, they just, they seem so resigned to the life that they have and they seem to have so little hope and oh, it just, it makes me feel so sad. But for the people of Luangwa, there is a glimmer of hope. My name is Jacqueline Long. My name is Lydia Peel. We are Pesalos girls. <laughs> Lydia and Jacqueline go back home to visit their families in Luangwa during school holidays. Lydia's father, mother and two brothers have all died. She now depends on her sister. This is my house. My uncle made it. It's made of glass and clay. I live with my sister. This is where my sister sleeps and me I sleep on the mat. Jacqueline has to help her mother and father raise her two brothers. This is my father's field, or my father's maze. Sometimes there is not enough, and sometimes we are hungry. Most days, we eat only one meal. And often, it's the women and girls who must sacrifice the little they have for the rest of their families. If the girls weren't at Pestalozzi, their only hope would probably be getting married, usually very young. Girls here marry at 12 and 13, because then the family gets the bride price. Getting pregnant, starting the whole cycle again. And often, wives are just kitchen slaves and field slaves for men, and they marry, they'll have three and four wives, because then they don't have to pay the price of labor if they can put the women in the fields. It is the culture, it's the Zambian African culture that a woman must spend for her children. A woman must be in the field, the woman must spend look for firewood. A woman must get water to bring it home. It's, it's the culture. It has been an African culture that a woman does everything. African culture, it used to enslave women or enslave girls. There are far more women now who want to get out of that, that situation. If they have a chance to go to school and get an education, they want to learn, they want to do things, they're hardworking and they're efficient. And we really need to be spending a lot more time giving young girls the opportunity to improve, their, to improve the quality of their life. Pestalozzi offers girls such as Lydia, Jacqueline and their families just such an opportunity. 
now Pestalos is complete. <laughs> The Pestalozzi Center is located in the small village of Kasisi outside Lusaka, the capital of Zambia. It was built in only September 1998, but is already term time home to over 60 girls between the ages of 9 and 16. The center pays for the Pestalozzi girls to attend the local village school in the mornings. But for over half the girls in Zambia, school is little more than a dream. It is difficult for girls to go to school normally, especially in the rural areas of Zambia. Eight, one family. Now how do you send eight girls to school, or eight children to school? There'll be no money, there'll be no uniforms, there'll be no shoes, there'll be nothing. So you, you sort of choose maybe boys, they prefer boys. Because the thinking, the girl should be submissive to the man and she's going to get married later, but the boy, he just has to get education. You know, just on the grounds of being a girl, you find that ladies will be forced out of school. But the Pestalozzi girls are proving that given the chance, they can make the grade. Last term, the only grade nine girls that passed the grade nine exams at the local school were our girls from Pestalozzi. It's not just about academic education. The Pestalozzi Foundation, which set up the center, is based on an all-embracing philosophy. The Pestalozzi philosophy is a holistic approach to education. The head is about academic education. The heart is about learning to share, learning to live together and cooperate. And the hands are, is the skills training. When the girls come to school here, you know, all the things they're meant to believe they can never achieve, the things they're meant to believe they can't do from their homes, when they come here, they just realize, I can do this. Because there's all the inspiration and there's all the appreciation and there's room for them to experiment and try a lot of other things, you know, which nobody would see sense in if they tried at home. This is a place where they just feel, I can do it. Pestalozzi teaches the girls skills that they wouldn't be taught in school, from computer studies to organic and conservation farming. One of the things they are learning is, is conservation farming. A lot of people are starving. There shouldn't be starvation. People should be able to grow crops, although the rains were bad, with conservation farming. Craft skills such as sewing, beading and hair plaiting are also key. These are skills which can help them even if they don't, you know, pass in school with flying colours. They could still be productive from their homes. The reason for teaching them craft skills is that they learn to produce items that they can sell. Is people, there's no cash economy in the rural villages and it gives them an access to cash. I like plaiting. Sometimes the teachers come here, I plait them and then they pay me money. Healthcare is an essential subject. When the girls come to the centre, some of them don't even know how to brush their teeth. Let's see if your teeth are clean. Let's see yours. Let's see yours, Clara. Okay. We teach these girls about health and hygiene, how to take baths and to keep themselves uh, clean, and how to cover their food when they are cooking, to keep the flies away. People die a lot from cholera during the rainy season because of flies. And uh, for example, girls are making now some uh, net covers to cover their food. <laughs> When the girls come back here from their holidays in their villages, many of them usually come back with malaria, dysentery, and many other diseases that they pick up when they're home. There are a lot of deaths in the villages. These deaths is, is a, it's a thing which happens often, and you are always afraid that, oh, who is next? Because of whatever is happening, especially HIV AIDS. HIV is a big problem in Zambia. 20% of the population are HIV positive. 80% of the hospital beds are taken up with HIV patients. It touches every girl here at the center. We constantly get messages that one of the girls has lost a relative and then we have to break the news to her. And it's, it's heartbreaking. My name is Grace Munya. My two sisters and one brother passed away. My mother and my, and my father passed away. My mother passed away in 1998. 
and my father passed away in 1999. I'm Mildred Kasond. Both my parents died. My father died in 1997 and my mother died last year. My name in is Konswata Mwanza. Both my parents passed away. Kamzongo. Both my parents died. My father my passed away in 1999. My mother my passed away in 1995. My when I was a baby, passed away in 1999, in 2000, when I was too young. When I was too young. My sister died in 1996. The girls we have here, somehow, some of them, both parents are dead. But the problem we have here is that people don't want to say they've died from AIDS. They don't want to talk about it. There are very few who have come up, or, or who have opened up to say, I have HIV, I'm living with HIV. But most of uh, the children here don't know what have killed their parents. I, V, which is human immunovirus. We put a lot of emphasis on teaching them about it, on talking about it. We have an, uh, often an HIV positive speaker, a woman, come and talk to the girls. Um, before they're going back to their villages each term. And the matron is constantly um, talking to them about being open about abuse from fathers, brothers, uncles in their village. And also, that's part of, we're empowering the girls and giving them confidence, the confidence to stand up and say no. Because we've always told them that the sky is the limit. Don't look at men and think men will look after you. You have to have the education. Because with education, you can do anything. You can work, you can look after yourself, you can look after your children. So we have taught these girls this, and I think they understand what we are trying to tell them. The centre hopes that the benefits of the teaching here won't just stop with the girls. The idea of what we're, we're, we're trying to do is actually going to have a ripple effect. It's not only empowering the girls to have a better standard of life or an opportunity to improve their quality of life. It is what they will be able to take back to their village and impart to the people in their village. So it has a ripple effect. And we're uh, in the process of setting up satellite centers now in their villages, which will help them continue with their skills trainer, become trainers themselves, and also provide an outlet for their goods. But the future of the Pestalozzi Centre depends entirely on the continuing goodwill of others. Although the centre is run by a board of trustees, those people are absolutely voluntary. They, 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 they give up their time and they're not given any recompense at all. So everything that is raised goes directly to the centre and it is used to run it. It only costs £300 per year to fund a child at Pestalozzi. Only £300 and effectively that helps an entire village. Huge benefits from this funding are already obvious. I think they are quite different now from the girls from the village. When they came, we talked to them, they looked down because they are shy. But now, they are really uh, jacked up girls, strong, confident of themselves uh, compared to the girls in the village. I think they are quite uh, strong girls now and uh, they don't lack any confidence anymore. There's a Zambian saying which says, Imiti kula empang, which means these small shoots will be big trees. In the same way, these girls will be the leaders of tomorrow. And without Pestalozzi, these leaders might not exist.